Hello from the 11th inning stretch. My name is Paul Epi, and this is the Cardinals podcast recorded on August 7th. Uh, the Cardinals podcast, the, the Week in Review podcast. Uh, Alex is not with me today, so you'll just hear me rambling on here for the next uh, 10 or so minutes. Um, so what I'm going to do with you, since Alex is not here, I'm just going to go through um, each game uh, from the past week and sort of dissect it, you know, what happened and uh, – you know, see where we're going in the next week. Um, but I I hate to be the bringer of bad news and to be a downer, but uh, it was a very disappointing and, and sort of embarrassing week for the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, they, they split that series in Miami last week, and the feeling was, you know, we split the series, but at the same time, we should have won the series. On Sunday, they had that defensive misfit out in uh, left center field um, and and miscue, and that ended up costing the Cardinals in the game, costing the Cardinals the game in the ninth inning. And, you know, the feeling was that shouldn't have happened. We should have taken three or four from Miami, uh, but we got a split and a split against a wild card rival in – at their place isn't isn't that terrible. So off the Cardinals go to Cincinnati, and the expectation is, well, you need to win the series because the Reds are, are you know, God knows how many games back in the Central. They're, they're not going to be contending for at least another year or two. Uh, they're in rebuilding mode. we got to take advantage and come up with at least two, probably three wins. Well, what do you know? Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, the first game on Tuesday, the Cardinals should have won, but the pitching let them down. The bullpen let them down. Uh, Sangwon O got, got, ended up getting the loss, uh, and that was a walk off for the Reds. Uh, offense was fine. They, you know, they scored five runs. That should be enough to win you a ball game, uh, but it didn't do the job for them. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, same thing, except the bullpen was able to to, to shut it down. The Cardinals scored five runs. Uh, the pitching showed up. Uh, the bullpen showed up. That's a win you need need to have. On Thursday, uh, the the Cardinals just got whooped. Uh, Cincinnati came out in, in, in the second inning and scored two, and then in the sixth inning they basically cemented it with with a four run sixth inning. And um, the starting pitching. Uh, once again, failed them. Uh, granted, I'm going to give credit to Brandon Finnegan, who pitched a hell of a game. Uh, I'm pulling up the box score here, and um, he only allowed uh, two hits, and he had four strikeouts uh, in, in, in six innings pitched. So by all means, credit to Brandon Finnegan for going out and, and shutting down a very good Cardinals lineup. Um but if you're a Cardinals fan, man, that, it, it was tough to watch. You know, you really wanted to, to see them take the series, as they should have. Um, but they didn't do it. Um, so this is where I, I start to get a little angry at, at, at this year's Cardinals, is they, they lose the series in Cincinnati. Um, and while it's embarrassing and it probably shouldn't have happened, uh, you come home to St. Louis and you have three games against the Braves and uh, three games against the Reds. Once again, we all know how, how bad the Cardinals have been at home this season. I believe they have a losing record um, and they haven't been able to, to, to seal the deal. And granted they have played some good teams at home, but uh, if you're on your home turf, you, you should be winning. Um, so the Cardinals come home, face Atlanta and, as of Sunday, August 7th, Atlanta is 25 games out of first place in the NL East, and they're 41 and 70. So that should, you know, prove how, honestly, how bad they are right now. They are in rebuilding mode. They are even worse than the Reds. Um, so the the first game of that series, uh, it was kind of funny because it was a one nothing victory. But uh, who drives in the only run is starting pitcher Jaime Garcia. Uh, so that was their their one run of offense. The uh, Braves pitcher, uh, um, 
I'm blanking on his name. Oh, it was uh, Joel De La Cruz. He pitched really well. He went uh, five and a third with two strikeouts, um, which for which for Braves fans you should be very happy with. Um, and like I said, Jaime only drove in or drove drove in the only run, and the Cardinals only mustered two hits. Uh, the only other Cardinal to get a hit was uh, Piscotti. He was he was one for four. Um, Garcia, you know, as much as we didn't like him starting on three days rest last Saturday against the Marlins, uh, he pitched really, really well. Um, he had an extra days of rest, so he had six days. And he went out there and threw eight strong innings with only three hits and 11 strikeouts. Uh, there was some chatter about whether that they should leave him out there for the ninth. Uh, he was only at 89 pitches. Um, my opinion was uh, you need to bring in the closer because you just don't know how much Jaime has left. Yes, he st- has 11 strikeouts and only 89 pitches, but with with last week's outing, he got pummeled, and um, you don't know what, what physical condition he is in, you know, especially given his, his prior history, his prior injury history. Um, so they brought in O and he got the save uh, one, one, nothing victory for the Cardinals coming into Saturday. Um, they got pummeled. Um, the final score was 13 to five. Uh, the Braves came on swinging right in the first inning. They got one run in the first and then three in the third and three in the fifth. And, it was over at, it was over after the fifth inning um, and the starting pitching once again failed them that seems to be the common theme throughout this past week um, Martinez went five innings and allowed six earned runs uh, which is very uncharacteristic of 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 Martinez he uh, with the Cardinals struggles in starting pitching this season he has been the one constant. Uh, coming in, I think he had something like a 2.8 ERA, which was, I would assume, the best on the team. And uh, you know, like I said, yeah, he's he was he's been the one constant, and every fifth day he goes out there, and you sort of expect a victory, but that wasn't the case this past week. Um, coupled with him and Jonathan Broxton coming out and sort of making the game even even more out of reach. Um. Yeah, it, the Cardinals didn't have much of a chance. Um, so, you know, the Cardinals come in on Sunday, and you have to think, okay, look, <laughs> you you need to win Sunday. Uh, you need to win Sunday because, it to me, it just doesn't register uh, the idea of losing a series to the Atlanta Braves at home. And that's probably because the Cardinals have been so good at home for the past 10 years that uh, you expect them to win like 50, 55 games at home. Um, and so far the Cardinals aren't, aren't even coming close to that, to that pace. Um, so Sunday is here and the Cardinals end up losing. Um, Adam Wainwright did not, you know, Adam Wainwright looked more like the Adam Wainwright that we saw at, at the beginning of the season. Very inconsistent, couldn't hit the strike zone. Uh, and part of it too was just tough luck. Um, you know, he, he he was on a roll for for a couple months, quite a number of months actually, and you expect him to keep it going, but that wasn't the case. And you thought you know he would have had a favorable matchup against the Braves, but it once again wasn't the case. The final score was six to three, uh, and the Braves jumped on him in the first two innings. Um, that seems to be a common theme throughout this series as well. The Braves scoring early runs. Wainwright went six innings with six earned runs and three strikeouts and three walks and nine hits. Um, the offense tried to, you know, chip away, chip away. They got one in the fifth and two in the eighth uh, to cut into it. Um, but my problem is the fact that they had nine men l- left on base. And I touched on this in, in the in, in the Reds series preview. Um, I think the biggest bugaboo this weekend for the Cardinals was all the men left on base. They had seven on Friday, eight on Saturday, and nine on Sunday. Um, if you're putting men on base, but you're not scoring the runs, uh, there's really no point of having the men on base because if they're not going to score, then they're practically useless. Um, that is one thing 
that has been uh, abnormal, I would say, for this weekend was usually when the Cardinals get men on base, they they score them, and they've also been hitting a lot of home runs. I don't think they had any home runs in 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 in, in this series. Uh, I'm looking at the box scores, and I don't I don't see any. Maybe I'm just reading it wrong. Who knows? Um, but situational hitting has has been the the strong point of the Cardinals this season. You know, they have 11 pinch hit home runs. They get a lot of hits and runs with two outs, uh, and that wasn't the case this weekend. Um, you you would have liked to see it happen this weekend because they are playing such a bad team. Um, but it didn't happen. You know, I, I was angry about this, this brave series, but now the more I think about it is I just think of it as sort of an anomaly. I don't, it's just one of those things you have to throw out the tape, throw out the, the thought of the series and just move on. So I will move on to this next week where the Cardinals host the Reds for three, and then they hit the road for four at Chicago. Um, so starting off with the Reds, um, but I, you know, we I'm going to say it again. They they need to win this series, and from 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 this point in the season on toward to the end of the season, I think it's all about winning series. Uh, if you come away with a two to one series victory, or you come away with a, even a two two split in Chicago, or a three to one series win, that's got to be viewed as a success. Uh, any series win is a success. <laughs> The, the Red Series is something I think they can do. Um, they have Garcia going, so hopefully he can carry over his, mo- his momentum from the Braves start on Friday to Wednesday when he goes again. Um, the Reds are throwing out a pretty decent pitcher in Anthony DiSquafani. He, he is having a pretty good season. Uh, he's 6-0 with a 2.94 ERA and a 1.19 whip. Um, the Reds have had some – better pitching as of late Um, but the Cardinals with the best offense in the league in my opinion should be able to hit them Um, and the big one to watch out for is is the uh, four game series in Chicago Uh, I will preview it more in the preview video later on this week but um, the Cubs have Lester, Arietta, Hendricks and and, and Lackey going out there Uh, so they're throwing their their four best guys out there Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the Cardinals can do. They have uh, Martinez, Wainwright, Waka, and Leak. So Martinez and Wainwright, they're also thrown out two of the best. Uh, and Waka and Leak have sort of been toss-ups all season. Um, it's going to be fun to watch. You know, it's going to – at this point, I don't think the the Cardinals should be concerned about the division. Uh, as of right now on August 7th, the Cardinals are – excuse me – 11 and a half games out of first place in the central. Uh, I just don't see the, see them catching the Cubs because the Cubs have won seven straight and they're nine and one in their last 10. Um, but at this point, I think it all, it, it all has to be about the wild card. Um, right now, the Cardinals are only one game out of the second wild card spot. The, the Marlins have that spot and then the Dodgers have a two and a half game lead on the first wild card spot. Um, but what you have now is basically, you know, the Dodgers, the Marlins, the Cardinals, the Mets, the Pirates, and even the Rockies. So you have six teams competing for basically two spots for, for the top two wild card. Um, and if it's not the Dodgers in the top, it'll it'll be the Giants. So whoever's leading that AL or the NL West, and then the Marlins, Cardinals, Mets, Pirates, and Rockies, you have competing for two spots. Um. You know, we've been saying it all season. I think the Cardinals, as long as they take care of their own business, um, there's no reason they should not be in the playoffs. Uh, they have one of the best teams out there, I think, on paper. Uh, it's just a matter of them going out there and taking care of business. And so far, it's been hit and miss. Um, we saw them get to pretty close to, 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 to 10 games over 500, and now they're back to five games over. Uh, it's just a matter of taking care of your own business, going out there and winning ball games, and everything else will take care of itself. You don't, you don't need to worry about these other teams in the wild card. Just go out and win ball games. Um, you know that that's pr- pretty much all I have written down in my notes here. So that is going to be it for the uh, Cardinals podcast. Uh, keeping it short today, at a matter of about 14, 15 minutes. Um, I will be back on Wednesday to do the. 
uh, MLB Week in Review. It'll probably be just me. Uh, I might try and get somebody on, so uh, we will see. Um, but until then, this has been Paul Epi from the Olympic Stretch. Thank you for joining us, and as always, go Cardinals.